Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'd like to talk about the nuclear engine in Kerbal's space program. The LVN, N-E-R-V, nuclear engine from Jeb's Junkyard, is a very important engine. And since Kerbal Space Program 1.0 has been released, I've had a few people complain about how the engine has been nerfed. Now, uh, there's two ways that that's changed. First of all, because of the way atmospheric thrust uh, profiles have changed, it means that it now doesn't get enough thrust at sea level to counteract the force of gravity on Kerbin, so you can't even lift off with it. But that was never a problem. They're supposed to be used in space where they're not going to you know, give radiation poisoning to anyone. The other thing is that they've changed it from using fuel and oxidizer to simply using the fuel. Now, there, there's a reasoning behind this. Uh, regular rocket engines, as you know, they burn fuel and oxidizer, and that releases chemical energy, which makes a lot of hot exhaust, which pushes the spacecraft along. In a nuclear engine, what you do is you have a nuclear reactor generating huge amounts of power, and to cool this reactor, you're passing cryogenic rocket fuel over it, and that just shoots out the back. It gets heated up by the reactor and leaves. Now, it can't be as hot as a regular chemical rocket engine because you have to stop the nuclear engine or the reactor core from melting. So what you do is instead, since you can't have a, as hot an exhaust, you use the lightest possible gas. You use hydrogen. Hydrogen is very light, and to uh, get the same temperature out of it, then the particles actually end up moving faster because of the way kinetic energy in gases works. Now, Kerbal Space Program doesn't have hydrogen as a fuel type, unless, of course, you use one of the real fuel mods that are out there. No, instead, you just get rid of the oxidizer in your fuel tanks and you have uh, liquid fuel left over, and that's what you use to fuel your engines, and that's fine. It does mean that your rockets end up being slightly larger, depending upon the amount of delta V you need. So let's look at this. Now, let's compare this against the, the nearest chemical engine equivalent. equivalent. This is the, the LV909 Terrier. This is a lot lighter. Uh, it generates the same amount of thrust, but it gets much lower specific impulse. And you can see that for this rocket this size, it's actually getting you more delta V, about 2.75 kilometers per second. That's because the engine is a lot lighter and because the fuel is a lot denser. So you're sharing your uh, specific impulse, your fuel efficiency across essentially twice as much fuel. So let's just uh, compare this against the nuclear engine. We're going to pop this off here, stick this one on, and you'll see that I only get 1.5 kilometers per second. So it's a huge advantage at the low end of the delta V requirements. But here's the question, how big a spacecraft do you have to build before the nuclear engine starts to get better? So what I can do is just pop this off here and start attaching these tanks. I've obviously just copied these parts and I'm using the, grabbing them with the Alt key to extend them out. It turns out that if you take uh, seven of these tanks, then you will get about six, well, 5.9 kilometers per second of delta V. You see, I've, I've emptied out all these tanks. And if I'm going to do the same here on the other side, again, using the Alt key to click and double these things up. These are full tanks, of course. So this is the same tank model I've just emptied it. And you see here, yeah, 5.7. So that's roughly where the crossover point is in terms of vehicle size. However, it's important to note that this vehicle is actually a lot heavier. Its mass is about 17 tons, whereas if I put on the nuclear engine, it's only about 11 tons. So now size is something of a consideration because larger objects require, you know, have larger drag due to aerodynamic forces. But ultimately, mass is what's the important thing. And if you consider how we're going to have to launch these things into orbit, let's find a uh, yes, there's my stack decoupler, stick that on there, and we'll just put a little rocket underneath it to figure out what it would take to get this thing into orbit. And this is what happens when you try to click and talk at exactly the same time. There, we put those, and I'm going to put a mainsail on the bottom. Oh, good old-fashioned mainsail there, drag that up. And there we go. Ah, 3.7, that's pretty close. I think that would get us at least a good way into orbit. At the very least, we'd be able to launch this thing up. So, if we're going to do that with the other one, we're going to need a larger uh, object. We're going to need a larger launch stage. So let's uh, just take this and we're going to see. Yeah, it only gets about 3.4 kilometers per second. So let's add in another chunk of fuel here just to see that we're needing uh, we're needing a bit more. Oh, yeah, that should work. Yeah, 3.7. Oh, there we go. So the advantages of the nuclear engine only get better as you go bigger.
So yeah, let's take this. This is 7.4. This is only 1500 meters per second more. You see it's a relatively compact rocket with the nuclear engine here. Again, we, we've just got a couple of uh, rocket max tanks here. 7.43 kilometers per second. What does it take to do with this with the LV-909? Well, you need a very, very, very long rocket. And even then, that's only 7.3 kilometers per second. This is a perfect example of the tyranny of the rocket equation. Things get exponentially larger, and specific impulse is really what you need to increase. And the nuclear engine has the best specific impulse. I think what uh, annoys people perhaps is the, you know, that you have to throw away this tank space. Some people actually complain that the liquid fuel is supposed to be kerosene and uh, the oxidizer is supposed to be liquid oxygen. And they had some idea that you could run those through a nuclear engine and then have some sort of afterburner that combusted them. And that made some sort of sense. But then when you switched it to only running liquid fuel, it meant like you were running kerosene through a nuclear reactor, which made less sense to them. I think that perhaps is just sidestepping the, the whole issue that nuclear engines are supposed to be a different technology. Now, if you want to just have pure liquid fuel, you do have the plane parts and they're available. They work pretty well. So that's pure liquid fuel here. And that should get me about seven and a half kilometers per second. Oh, yeah, there you go. 7.5 kilometers. I was totally guessing there. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you that would work relatively well. So anyway, liquid fuel in the game is supposed to be kerosene, or, or actually it's RP-1, which is a very pure form of kerosene used in rocket launches. Now, the game doesn't support uh, liquid hydrogen as a fuel type. In fact, it doesn't support many different fuel types. There is a mod called Real Fuels, which is worth uh, checking out if you want to use this stuff. But if you want to kind of get an idea for the scale of things, there's one, there's a, a thing you can do. Okay, so let's say for a minute that we did replace the kerosene with hydrogen. Well, the, the fuel tanks would only be able to contain roughly one-tenth as much liquid fuel. And so, very quickly, what you find is that the mass of the fuel tanks really start to dominate if we make things realistic. We built this ginormous thing powered by a nuclear engine and filled it with liquid hydrogen and it doesn't get much performance at all. So. Be thankful that the game developers didn't actually go this route, which they could absolutely justify. The, the real thing is that these fuel tanks are actually very, very heavy for their size compared with real-world fuel tanks. This is part of the game balancing. So it's not that unrealistic to have perhaps, you know, double that maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for reference, on the space shuttle, the external tank was the single largest component, and the single largest part of that was the hydrogen fuel tank inside it. And that was only 5% of the mass of the whole spacecraft. Okay, so I'm gonna present to you all a bit of a challenge. The idea is you want to build a spacecraft which will go to orbit using only, only liquid fuel, right? And that's easy enough, you know, these tanks have only liquid fuel here. You can empty out the oxidizer here and this thing will fly. We obviously run the nuclear engine to get it into orbit and the jet engines to get up into space. Okay, but how about a real challenge, trying to take one-tenth of the amount of fuel space and fly into orbit with it? Okay, so while this spacecraft contain has only 6,420 units of liquid fuel available, uh, I've also accounted for the oxidizer space. So you add the two together, divide by 10, and that is the amount of fuel you are allowed to use on your vehicle. And strictly speaking, uh, you want to do the, that with each stage, right? You don't want to have one stage, you, know, you don't want to have a ton of tank space and then just jettison it. That would be considered cheating. So anyway, can you build something that gets to space? Probably. Do you think you can build something that gets to orbit? Well, as it turns out, this thing will actually manage to get into orbit. But it is not a single stage to orbit uh, vehicle by any means. See, we've got the staging here. Once we get up to speed, I'm going to ditch these stages. Uh, I'm using Kerbal Engineer now to give me the information on my Delta Vs. Ditch that, and then this thing just kind of rides itself up. One of the problems you will run into is that empty fuel tanks, or at least fuel tanks with one-tenth of the amount of fuel, are very uh, light and therefore get a lot of aerodynamic effects. And you'll find that these th uh, spacecraft are incredibly unstable and hard to fly. So I'd really love to see if somebody can actually build a single stage to orbit with basically one-tenth of the amount of fuel. Please show me your designs if you can do it.
Yeah, and feel free to muck around with real fuels, but just please stop complaining about the nuclear engines being nerfed, because they haven't been nerfed at all. You're just using them wrong. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.